these days, uh, actually for the past couple of years, the only thing that excites me about a Pixel launch is the fact that we'll eventually get a new Google camera app for our phones. If anybody from Google is watching this and is getting pissed, well, even if I wanna buy a Pixel 5, you didn't launch it in India, so... Yeah, uh, guys, you read the title. Pixel 5 Google camera app has been ported to other Android phones. And uh, the best thing about this is it's supported on a lot of phones. So your current Android phone is probably on the list. So let me show you how to install and configure it and walk you through some brand new features of Gcam that were introduced with the Pixel 5. And of course, a lot of sample pictures. Let's get started. Before we begin, if you care about your phone, if you don't want to lose huge money on replacing your phone's display, then spend a tiny amount on a tempered glass from our sponsor, Glazed Ink. What's special about Glazed Ink is that they have actual 2.5D curved glass along the edges, so the entire screen is covered and protected. No air bubbles or awkward gaps, which you might get from installing any other tempered glass in the market. Glazed Ink also has tempered glasses for a lot of other phones as well, including the Realme 7 Pro, Galaxy M51 and so on. So link in the description, just make sure you use the promo code TJOCK to get 10% discount. So first things first, do not expect this to work on phones without a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. Traditionally, Gcam ports have never really worked uh, well on Exynos or Kirin powered phones. They work on some MediaTek powered phones, albeit with some limitations. Personally, I tried installing this Pixel 5 Google camera app on the Poco X3, the OnePlus 8 Pro and the Redmi K20 Pro and it worked quite well on all of them. So let me show you how to install it on your Android phone. Not sure if it will work, but it's definitely worth a shot. First, visit this page on your phone's browser. The link to this page can be found in the description box below the video. Tap this link and download and download the APK. Now install it. If a window pops up asking for permission to install it, there is nothing to worry about. You can provide the permission. You need to tap allow for everything except for location access. That's optional. This is the Redmi K20 Pro, by the way. Like I said earlier, I installed it on the OnePlus 8 Pro as well. And as you can see, it works pretty well. And yeah, the Poco X3 too. In fact, it also works on a particular phone that hasn't even launched yet. Sorry, cannot talk about it. I'm just emphasizing uh, on how good the support is. And not to forget, a huge thanks to all the developers behind this, most notably the senior XDA member Arnova 8G2 for making this happen. Next up, the features. What is this new Gcam capable of? There's nothing outstanding about it per se. Uh, as in there is no noticeable difference in the image quality itself. Gcam version 7, which is the previous version, captures equally good pictures and videos. There is one new thing for audio quality. This Gcam supports audio zoom. Basically, when you zoom in while capturing a video, the audio will also become louder. But the major improvement uh, in this version is the user interface. It's a lot easier to use, especially for beginners or amateurs who are not really technically strong or very knowledgeable when it comes to clicking pictures. Not much to talk about the main camera screen, except Gcam has smooth zoom now. It's available across all the modes. It doesn't do a hard cut. Of course, it doesn't really matter for clicking photos, but for videos, it's useful. It looks better. And after recording a video, you also get a tiny prompt here to share the video on social platforms like Instagram and WhatsApp. You can tap the settings icon and enable or disable more apps. The video mode has three options down here, slow motion, normal and time lapse. Now, this is what I like about the Pixel 5G cam. Everything is simplified. There are not many technical terms. Uh, like in slow motion mode, you don't see 120 FPS or 240 FPS. Instead, Gcam just wants you to select how slow you want the video to be. One fourth of the regular speed or one eighth of it. Similarly, for time lapse, you see a multitude of options for different levels of uh, speed and in any mode, you can just swipe down anywhere to view the settings for that particular mode. In portrait mode, there is an auto night sight button. Uh, if it's enabled, it will automatically trigger night sight mode while capturing a portrait when it's dark out there. 
there is nothing much to configure here. This is a pretty bare bones version. Just one thing on the main camera screen, swipe down and enable HDR plus. That will make a huge difference to your photos. On the video mode, there are four stabilization options. The app also tells you which is good for what. Uh, another new feature is the storage saver. If you're running out of storage and you're okay with temporarily compensating uh, on the quality of photos and videos you take, you can enable this. And it will click photos and videos at lower resolutions and frame rates. Okay, enough with the walkthrough, it's time to view some samples. Here you go. These were shot on the OnePlus 8 Pro. A subtle difference here, uh, the Gcam photo has slightly more accurate colors. Same here, the Gcam photo is also mildly sharper. These are from the Poco X3. Huge difference in the contrast. The blacks look blacker on the Gcam image. Selfies are a no-brainer. Google camera captures much sharper, more detailed selfies. And here's a shot from the Redmi K20 Pro. Like I said earlier, this port may not work perfectly on all phones. This is a very early build. Even on the OnePlus 8 Pro, there were a few instances where we saw a green tint on the images. And in many cases, the Gcam images were not very different from the stock camera ones. Sometimes they turned out worse. But yeah, like I always say in all my Gcam videos, it's not like you can only use one app. Anyway, both stock camera and Google camera apps will be available uh, on your phone. Here is a stock camera night mode versus Google camera night sight comparison. As you can see, there is noticeably less noise on the Gcam image. So. Uh, do have a look at a few more samples if you're interested and uh, let me know your thoughts about this Gcam port in the comment section. Definitely try installing this, click some pictures and share them on Twitter with the hashtag TechnologyJock. Don't ask why, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to get the name out there. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye and take care.